Yo, man, what's good? It's your man DJ Regency from NAPRadio.com and the best damn radio.com. We were definitely in the streets this weekend, Indiana Black Expo Summer Celebration 2010. Uh, a lot of good stuff was going on, man. A lot of nice parties and uh, a lot of nice people came from out of town. Man, the talk of the town, talk of the day is all of the uh, drama that occurred over the weekend. In case you ain't heard, there was a couple shootings, even some possible bomb threats. Uh, some people didn't hear about that. Uh, the news definitely definitely didn't report it so much. Uh, but there was a lot of a lot of a lot of stuff going on as far as the the drama side, and a lot of talk as far as what to do. Um, they did catch the guy one, or one of the guys that was doing a lot of the shootings. Um, but a lot of talks today on the news media uh, as far as what to do, uh, what things to do, and why what went wrong uh, with the Indiana Black Expo. And uh, I definitely want to give uh, my two points and, and uh, kind of give some feedback if you can, uh, get some comments to the video. But, uh, you know, one the main issue, I think, and uh, people definitely aren't looking at it because they're looking at the, oh, man, what are we going to do about the crime? What are we going to do about the, the guys? And... I think the thing we really got to understand is the the, the teenagers uh, pretty much were the cause of everything, uh, necessarily that that went negative. Uh, and then you got to look at where the, the most of the, the the things that occurred was by the Conseco Fieldhouse area, where uh, the teen the big teen bling event was held. And so you got to look at the structure of the way that the whole Black Expo is is now set up, and uh, who's in charge of that basically is the Black Expo president. And so, more or less, I'm putting more of the blame on the, the leadership of uh, Indiana Black Expo. And a lot of people were saying how it used to be back in the day versus how it is now. Well, I was one that was there back in the day. And I'll just give you a couple comparisons of how it is now versus how it is then. For the most part, it was not $15 to get in. Um, it's a family event. Uh, it's a homegrown kind of, kind of feel to it. Well, that feel has been lost through this corporate lawyer, I believe, who is now the, the president. And so, um, yeah, you get more corporate things are happening, but you're losing out on the field. Um, and so I think definitely when Reverend Charles Williams was alive and running, you could definitely see the, the, the field, the homegrown field of, of, uh, of the expo. Um, you know, even with the radio itself, the radio plays a major part in the expo. Uh, I can remember they used to broadcast live all day long, and you would hear all the events inside of the expo. Well, that right there made you want to go to Expo to see everything that was going on inside Expo. Uh, they had a lot, a lot of celebrity interviews this year. Not, I don't, I don't, I didn't hear any. Uh, there were no celebrity interviews as, as, as much as there used to be, uh, which means if you got a celebrity inside the convention center with 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 a big name, big all every hour, you have a celebrity coming in. People on the outside hear that. That makes them want to come inside. You got some famous rap stars, R&B stars, R&B singers. The ladies will hear that. They definitely want to come. And if the ladies are inside, the fellas will come inside. You get it? You guys ain't got people inside no more. Uh, everybody's outside now. So that's the big major problem. Nobody goes inside the expo anymore. Uh, I used to get booths all the time. That's why I don't get booths because nobody goes in to, to even help you out, to even make a profit. So why get a booth? You know what I mean? Uh, Expo is in charge of that, making sure you get people inside. So that whose fault, I believe, it comes from the head top down. And so you really got to look at the structure of everything. And another thing is everything used to be under one pretty much roof, big facility, big convention center. Now you got the kids way over here at the convention center. I mean, over here at the Conseco. Uh, why you got a lot of teenagers separated from where you know all the the main things are you think that's a good idea but wh what actually happened was uh, at the end of the night when it's all over you're releasing thousands and thousands of teenagers out into one generalized location uh spells a lot of trouble and what happens they're all waiting on rides so they're not leaving they're just congregating and not going anywhere so it's, it's like a brew of waiting to happen kind of thing and so the rides can't get to them fast enough because all the roads are blocked. So they're having trouble getting the rides. I mean, it's a real chaotic thing when you think about it. You got teenagers down there who can't get the rides. And so what happens? They're looking around. They're trying to meet to different streets, going different streets, trying to find people. And, uh, I mean, a lot of curfew violations can occur just by trying to wait to get to your ride situation. Uh, so, man, it's just real chaotic. You know what I mean? And like I say, I, I look at the structure, the total structure of it, and look where it comes from, the top the top head wigs going down. 
So you can look at what actually happened, blame the, the shooters and everything. And sure, they are responsible, uh, but the structure did not provide anything uh, to help in, in something like that. You know, like I said, back in the day, uh, like I said, $5 tickets, you can get the whole family in. $15 tickets, ain't nobody coming in. So why are you getting more greedy with it? That's the question. Why do you need to charge $15? Can't you get sponsorship to pay for the differences? You could call yourself a corporate sponsor. You're a corporate lawyer. You need to find a way to lower the price for the people. That's why it was a homegrown uh, kind of event for the people. Now you're for corporate business. So if you really want to understand what's going on with Expo, and if you really want to make a change, come back to the people. You know, you didn't have even the DJs DJing live on the radio this weekend. You know, why you have every holiday, DJs DJing all day, all night, mixing all day long. But we got the biggest event, and you can't even have the DJs live. Also, just a quick comment, you know, it is the Indiana Black Expo, and, you know, it's just the, the corporate thing is, is, is really, um, this, this is basically my final point, it's not working. Um, they didn't bring the dollars in. You know, so what's the point? You know, find a new leadership. And that's what you need to do. So uh, as of whenever you want to do it, start, you look now. You know, find somebody that knows how to keep the people involved in the expo. You know, you got out-of-towners coming in. Uh, all they're doing, what we're doing is looking for clubs, pretty much, you know. Uh, and that's it. It's turned to a club, th uh, a club event. And it was way, way more than that. And so, like I said, speaking from the vendor side, people who go spend seven hundred plus dollars trying to get a booth uh, inside the convention center, and there's no people in there. So how are you going to expect to even make uh, generate revenue when you don't even have uh, potential customers? And so, uh, look at your numbers. You're not hearing a lot of uh, detail about how the numbers, uh, the total attendance that actually came inside Expo. You're not hearing a lot about that. So find out about some numbers. I'll try to find out about some numbers. How many people actually were in there? How many people, uh, how many vendors actually really made money? And so those are things you need to know to know the, the success of the event. Don't just look at the, the shooting and see what happened. What about the event? Did it have success itself? Not, the stars really weren't here like that. Uh, not like it used to be. It used to be mega stars from soap operas to movies to basketball to any sports to anything that had to do with entertainment. They were here. Magic Johnsons, and uh, we, we had none of that now. None of that. Uh, we lost a lot of big sponsors that you already had here. So I really don't understand uh, this leadership that we have here. Pretty much that we need new leadership. So whoever's in charge, Indiana Black Expo, I'm DJ Regency, NAPRadio.com, getting the word from the streets, delivering it to you uh, right here. Get some new leadership, all right? Well, we come back at you next time. Uh, Circle City Classic is coming, so look, look for us then. 2010 Circle City Classic, NAPRadio.com, and DJ Regency. We out.